a massive London derby is about to take place. Chelsea against Arsenal. So we thought we'd jump in and get a combined 11 together. All-time Premier League combined 11 for Chelsea and Arsenal. Yeah, I think to begin with, it'll be quite straightforward but it gets a lot harder when you get attacking. Yeah, I have a weird feeling that our teams are going to be practically the same. Maybe one or two changes. So we're going with a 4-3-3. Let's start off with a goalkeeper. Who have you got in net, Theo? So, Manuel mentions, I think you've got to give shout-outs to Jan Lehmann, purely because of the Invincible season. Um, but also in the European final when he got sent off. I mean, I'm Still salty? Yeah, still salty. <laughs> <laughs> then David Seaman, the greatest Arsenal keeper of all time. Um, and although I, th- I think if this is 99% of other keepers, I think you'd put your David Seaman in. But I think Petr is the greatest, without a doubt. Greatest Premier League goalkeeper of all time, and I think Petr has got to be in there. That's not even a controversial opinion for me. Yeah. Petr Cech is definitely the best Prem goalkeeper of all time. And he played for both clubs, which yeah. just makes this an even easier decision. Although, no shout out for Courtois, though? Not necessarily for his time at Chelsea. No, I'd agree. Yeah. I thought I was just trying to catch you out there. but yeah. So Petr Cech for both of us, easy choice. Definitely. Maybe not for his time at Arsenal, because that was during our worst time period I've ever seen us play, so... But he wasn't particularly bad still, was he? Yeah, yeah, not necessarily, but... He was just okay. Nowhere near as good as his Chelsea peak. We'll go on to left-back. The easiest choice again, isn't it? I I think it's got to be Ashley Cole. I don't think I've even got any honourable mentions. It's weird, up until recently, I've I've always, as every Arsenal fan, we've always had an agenda against Ashley Cole. But um, I recently saw an interview with um, an ex-Arsenal vice chairman called David Dean. And he said that it was not never Ashley Cole's fault for him leaving. I'm going with Ashley Cole as well. Got me. I have no, I have no honourable mentions. I can't even think of any other left backs I mean, that would really come close to his level. There's um, none. There's none. So we go on yeah. to centre backs. First centre back, who are you going with? I think the one that's a non-negotiable is JT John Terry. Mm-hmm. Uh, if not the greatest centre back in Premier League history, I think. Yeah. So for his captain ability. Just the way he defends. John Terry's got to be in there. I agree. He's my first pick as well, John Terry. I think the fact that he was at Chelsea for so long, won everything there was to win, had so many caps for England, and remained one of the key Chelsea centre-backs while having different partners throughout his time there. Like, it was constantly rotating around him, the whole defence, but he was kind of that rock in there. I do think that the second centre-back option is much harder. Definitely. For me, there's three centre-backs that could fit in that Ricardo Carvalho which I think but for that 2005 season he was unreal Saul Campbell Mm -hmm. and who I who I'm going to put in there Tony Adams mine is none of those my pick for a second centre back is none of the above I do have Tony Adams as my honourable mention for the one that didn't make it because I appreciate how good he was but my second pick for a centre back is actually Saliba, which may seem like really? I'm 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 jumping the gun a little bit, but I think based off what we've seen in the last couple of seasons and how good he already is, if you look back at this pick in a couple of years, you'll be like, yeah, fair enough. And he's already one of the best centre backs in the world. Oh, I d- I didn't even think <laughs> Saliba. Which, I, with hindsight, I probably should have. Like, I get he didn't have legend yeah. status, but in terms of quality of player for the amount of time they've played, he's he's top tier. Well, I, th- I think what you have to take into account is, for, similar to your point with John Terry, is what they've done with the club. Mm-hmm. Until Saliba wins something, he can't be legend status. Forgive me if I'm wrong, though. Wasn't a lot of Adam's time at his peak outside of the Premier League era? Uh, I get that, but he won the league in 98. He no. won it in 2002. I hear 89. that. But then also, you said Carvalho? Yeah. He wasn't kind of at his peak at Chelsea for that long? Yeah, no, I get that, but just uh, in the similar reason for Saliba, just a brilliant defender. Right back. This was hard for me. I actually think out of every position on the pitch, this was there wasn't as many good options here as I wanted yeah. there to be. Um I'll go in first. My honourable mention is Lee Dixon. Loads of appearances throughout the years for Arsenal. A lot of those, again, kind of came before the Premier League era as such. But he was still good in the Premier League era. Um, That leads on to my actual pick in the starting eleven, and that's Ivanovic. Because whenever I saw him play, whenever he was playing at Chelsea, he was a solid option. Won trophies there. 
and he was just great. Whereas I think Dixon, if he had a couple, you know, if he had a couple more years in his earlier years, he'd definitely be the pick. But for a Premier League all time eleven, I'm going Ivanovic. Uh, yeah, hundred percent Dixon. Um, I'd also like to shout out Lauren. Okay, Lauren uh, for obviously invincible right back. Um, for my generation, Bakary Sandu was really good to begin with. He trailed off towards the end, but he's obviously nowhere near the level of who I'm going to go with, which is Ivanovic. Come on, he's. Although he played more of a centre half, like in, in similar to Aspilicueta did, everything, everything he won at Chelsea, um, he didn't need to be that out and out right back. He was strong, steady, and what Chelsea need because, like you said, with John Terry, he had loads of different centre back pairings, mm-hmm. but he always had the comfortability of having Ivanovic on the other side of that centre back. So yeah, Ivanovic, hundred percent easy choice centre midfielders. So I've gone with two more centre mids. And one more attacking mid in mind. Um, My first centre midfielder, without a doubt, has to be in this team, is Frank Lampard. His record throughout the years for goals, just the the amount he did at Chelsea is unquestionable. Yeah, I I think that's a given. I think he's the first one in there. Yeah, everything you said, 100%. Who's your second one? My second, I think, is also a non-negotiable is Patrick Vieira. Oh, this is too easy. I said it's just going to be the whole this same third team. third one we're not going to agree on, I don't I think. I think we will. I think we'll agree on the third one unless... Oh, I can imagine you've gone for Ozil. There's no way. <laughs> All right, that's fine then. But completely agree, Vieira, Premier League legend, some massive moments, huge career for France as well. Just a, a legend of the game. And I think a lot of players now, you've even seen it in recent years with like, for example, Yaya Torre, who's also a massive Premier League legend now, but people were instantly comparing him to Vieira. If you see a box-to-box midfielder, a fantastic centre mid, they're always compared to Vieira still. Yeah. A couple of my honourable mentions for midfielder, their playing career is very similar to Vieira. So I've got like N'Golo Kante on there. Mm, yeah. Essien, Makalele. Not really many Arsenal shouts though, for a, yeah. other than Vieira for a holding mid. There isn't, I mean, obviously Rice at the minute, but he's not done. Gilberto Silva, Ozil, that's about it though. Yeah, I think Chelsea had a a lot more options there. Kante is really, really good and he's unlucky to miss out. Yeah, Kante, I was asking myself this question. I was like, is Kante better than Vieira? Yeah, who would you start? And it it just would be Vieira, wouldn't it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think he offered more of an attacking threat as well as the defensive threat. Uh, Should we move on? To the attacking midfielder. Yeah. Who have you got? I've got Cesc Fabregas. Wow. Because just the way, I mean, he's my favourite footballer of all time. So it's probably biased towards that. I mean, I was got when he left Arsenal. Um, we had a buyback deal in the when he went to Barcelona, mm-hmm. but we didn't, I don't know why we didn't go for it. So I've got, I've not really got an issue with him going to Chelsea. And he's never bathed at the club. He's never said anything bad about us. But I've never seen, I've not seen a player since be able to drive the ball that forward, to take on like 10 men in the Premier League and just, his first, his, his touch and control on the ball is unbelievable. And then also got that finishing. And then in his later years, he was able to defend and sit back as a six. So you can play a nine, a 10, an eight, a six. My pick is Cesc Fabregas. Good. I feel like people don't respect him as much as he deserves. I don't have him to hand, I should, but his goals and assist record is up there with some of the best centimetres in Premier League history. I think it might be the best in some kind of metrics. Uh, also had a good career with Spain as well, um, won tournaments there. I don't think he featured as much as he should have done, but that's just because of Xavi, yeah, Iniesta, yes, Sergio Busquets. Busquets. Yeah. He's never going to get as many games there. But in terms of what he's done at club level, for Arsenal as a youngster, fantastic. And then really in his Chelsea years was kind of where he excelled but it's just like I don't know why Cesc Fabregas isn't mentioned as much yeah I think he's he's definitely more of a uh, under the radar footballer I mean obviously English bias comes into it a lot mm. so yeah Lampard's definitely going to get way more of a shout but yeah I completely agree I think Fabregas is one of the best midfielders the Premier League's ever seen and now we're on to the all important front three this is where it gets tasty should we start on the left wing. Who have you got there? Purely for the way it's going to... I still don't really... I've got three players who don't exactly fit a position. Oh, no. You're already you're already trying to backtrack. Just tell us who's the no, left no, winger. Because, because I, no excuses. Left wing, Thierry Henry is the way okay. I've done it. 
Uh, I think on reason, I assume you've got him as the nine. Mm-hmm. But Thierry Henry, they could play out uh, on the left. I, th- I think that's a non-negotiable. The greatest. Oh, he has to be in the team. Yeah, yeah. I just don't have him at left wing. He's the greatest Premier League footballer of all time. Mm. I wouldn't disagree. Yeah. So left wing for me is not Thierry Henry. It is Eden Hazard, who for me simply has to be in the team. The amount of magical moments he had at Chelsea earned him that massive move, which he then went and just ate loads and wasted Real Madrid's money completely. But while he was at Chelsea, he was their most important player for like four or five seasons on the bounce. Like he was constantly up there getting past people, his agility, his finishing, everything about him. I think... I don't know how you... I mean, I'm, unless you've got him on the other wing, I don't know how you can't have Hazard in here. The issue is, I mean, when I was doing this, there was two definites I had. Um, and I'll get into the other one. So it was between the person I did go with and Hazard. And I was tossing and turning. I was like, it's, it's got to be one or the other. But the person I did end up going in with down the middle was Drogba. Drogba? Wow, okay. I, I, I think he's the... I think between him and Henri, he's the only player in the Premier League history who's a better traditional nine. Because mm. Henri was just a phenomenal player, but in terms of hold-up play, aerial duels, winning it, tormenting defenders, Drogba was scary. Oh, Drogba was scary, but for me, I've got Henri at number nine, obviously. Yeah. But... I think that Diego Costa in his time at Chelsea was actually more clinical and better overall than Drogba. Not Drogba had so many big game moments. That's undeniable. He was fantastic against better teams. But his overall record, I know it's not all about figures. It's not all about numbers. And he was a monster. He added so much to the team. But Costa was that as well. And I I don't have either of them. But I think I would have picked Costa over Drogba. Yeah, but I think I think you've also got to take into account Drogba won the Champions League and he's probably the single handed the reason they did that mm-hmm. with that goal. Um and I think just as a player, although Costa might have been more, you know, consistent, Drogba like on his day, he was different. Yeah, I don't deny that. So we've got one player left. Yeah, so do you want to go first on me? I'll go first because it'll yeah. surprise you. On the right wing, I've got Bakayo Saka. Okay. Because his record is already incredible. Still really young. He has been the main driving force for Arsenal's recent resurgence in the last few years. Homegrown talent, had to switch positions, has done a fantastic job there. And I think in Arsenal, nearly winning things many yeah. times, if it wasn't for him being in that team, it wouldn't happen. He'd get into any team in the world right now, maybe bar Liverpool. So for me, he's got to be in there already. Uh, yeah, I think Bakai Saka is definitely a great shout. And for the same reason I gave for not having Saliba in my list, I think it's, they just have to win something. Yeah, I mean, he's got an FA Cup. <laughs> Community Shield as well, can't forget that. Um, but honestly, I think he just, he needs to win something. Because uh, in 10 years' time, if we've not won anything, you won't put Saka in this list. I might if he continues with his scoring record. It's like saying I yeah. wouldn't have Kane in the best strikers of all time because he's not won a trophy. That doesn't stop yeah. how good he is. But who who do you have then? Who's your right winger? Well, before I get into my final spot, this is very hard. I mean, I had four players who didn't... Well, five players, sorry, that couldn't make it. Um, Iron Robin, who I really wanted to put in. Freddie Lungberg. Yeah, Robin's time at Chelsea, though. He was still really yeah, good. Yeah, but, yeah, I know but what you mean. But it's an honourable mention. Yeah, yeah. Freddie Lungberg, mm-hmm. Robert Perez, Diego Costa, and Robin Van Persie. Right. But I've had to exclude all of them to fit in Dennis Burkamp. On the right wing? This is what I mean. I've got, like, a three, but none of them, they're just going to, like, Dennis Oh, Burkamp no, that's a disgrace. Just, Dennis Burkamp can just fit himself. Do you know what I mean? Well, no, because obviously I would rather have Dennis Bergkamp in a starting 11 than Saka, but that's just, you can't have Dennis Bergkamp okay. titled as a right winger. No, no, no. Right. Well, it's 4 3, three. We'll, we'll just have two strikers and a, okay. Okay. And a yeah, 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 yeah. Do you know what I mean? That's a three there. I'll take it. I'll take it. But, very close overall. I think we've kind of smashed that, to be honest. I'm happy yeah. with that. My bench was, because I, I wrote down an actual bench, was Lehman, Adams, Dixon, Bergkamp, Costa and Van Persie. 
I think mine would be the same. Yeah, like they're all elite level players. There's even people on there that we've mentioned throughout here that I think just didn't quite have the longevity, but were great players as well. Do you know who I thought of for for one or two seconds? Willian. There was a few years when he was at Chelsea. Not he was never going to get in, but I remember when he was even like you know like someone like Pedro when they were at Chelsea. Great, but just not quite good enough. Yeah, but I don't know. He gives off like having people. He must have Thiago Silva in this list. Denver Bar. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm taking the purely pitch. for cost of Liverpool the league. I think maybe <laughs> purely but, uh, for vibes. Torres, mm, yeah, just not at Chelsea, unfortunately. Yeah, I mean he scored uh, that legendary Champions League goal, but apart from that, he did nothing. For me, I think I think the one I found hardest to miss out was um, Hazard. Yeah, Absolutely I can't bad. believe you don't have Hazard. It's, anyway, it's Hazard or Burkham for me, but yeah. I'll read out my full Chelsea and Arsenal all-time Premier League combined 11. In net is Petr Cech, left-back Ashley Cole, a centre-back partnership of John Terry and Saliba, right-back of Ivanovic, two centre midfielders in Vieira and Lampard, a centre-attacking mid in Cesc Fabregas, Hazard on the left wing, Henri up front, and Saka on the right wing. Okay, and as for me, I've got um, Petr Cech in net. Uh, a left back is Ashley Cole. The two centre backs are is Tony Adams and John Terry. And at right back, it's Ivanovic. I've got a three man midfield of Patrick Vieira, Frank Lampard, and Cesc Fabregas. And just ahead of them, in a 10 position, is Dennis Burkamp, with my two up top being Thierry Henry and Didier Drogba. Woo! 